Okay, I'd like to try this problem, a, um, where I've got a one kilogram ball that's uh, placed at a target where a um, rotating um, bar is going to hit it, all right? And when it hits it, the, um, when the bar hits the uh, ball, the ball will fly off into who knows where um, at some speed. And I want to figure out what speed that is, all right? Um, so here's the large problem statement down here. I'll obviously put that in the, in the comments as well. Um, there's no need for me to read it to you. Uh, but let me try to um, represent this first, right? Let's see what it's supposed to look like, right? So at some, some, well, at some level what I have is I've got a um, pivot here that at the very beginning, right in the before part, is rotating at some um, speed omega i and somewhere way over here it hits a stationary ball all right uh seems fairly fairly straightforward um but it's a collision it's an angular collision but it's a collision right it has angles but it's still a collision so it has an after as well and afterwards the um bar keeps swinging but not as quickly and the ball um, goes on its merry way. All right. So we need a bunch of symbols and things like that. And there, there you have it. That's what. That's all this is saying, right? So um, we put all that together and we add in, you know, what are the symbols? What are they? What are? What do they stand for? And what sort of values do we, do, do, does each one hold? Okay, so ID. So let's identify the parts of the problem, right? Um, like I said, we have a swinging pole. So we start with a swinging pole, right? And that swinging pole has some mass. Uh, let's call that mass M equals three kilograms and we have some length L we'll call that L and that was um, one meter in the problem statement um, we have an initial angular speed I guess I should have find these farther out Omega I, which is um, 16 ra radians per second, right? And actually, he's got a minus. Well, it's a speed, so it's so we don't need the minus sign. We don't need the uh, direction. Um, we probably really do need the minus sign in the direction, don't we? We have a final angular speed, so let's change these to velocities. Uh, let's see, there, minus K, right, so if this is X and this is Y, then K is up out of the board or out of the um, paper, um, so minus because it's going counterclockwise, that's the way I drew it, so that's the way we'll do it. Um, we've got omega F, which is minus 4, um, radians per second in the k-hat direction. Remember, radians are really unitless, and we just sort of assume them. Uh, you can put radians in to sort of keep your place if you want to, um, but really, they're not necessary. So, so you know, usually we don't use them. Um, so, I'm not going to. Uh, next, we have a ball, right? And what we know about the ball is it has a mass, like all objects have masses, except for photons, but we don't have photons in this class. And that's one kilogram, and we have an initial um, position, and that will be, um, what I'll call that x, and this is also a vector, we get, we get another vector here just for fun. 
Um, that vector is three quarters of the way from here to he to here, right? From here to here, really. Um, and so that is three quarters of the length of the thing. I'm perfectly happy to do that. And that's in the x direction. So the x direction is i hat. Okay. Um, and we need to know what we want to find. We want to know the final um, final speed of the ball. Call that v, which is it's, it's v. Okay. Um, so what else do we need before we get started uh, with our answer? We need to know what our general concept here is. We've got a collision, right? Um, our collisions we solve with conservation laws. So if we solve um, collisions with conservation laws, then we need to choose our conservation law. And um, in this case, we have this thing swinging around, right? Before we have only um, angular momentum, we have no regular momentum because it has a fixed point, right? So we only basically have angular momentum around the pivot, right? Um, we have no guarantee here that there's a um, conservation of energy. We, we don't. We, we don't have that guarantee. Um, so the only thing that we really have a guarantee for here is conservation of angular momentum. And we don't, well, I'm, and, and that's because we don't have any um, exterior torques, right? There's nothing here except this guy hitting this guy, all right? That's all there is in the problem. So if that's all there is in the problem, that means there's no exterior torque. There no, there's no uh, gravitational force pulling something around. There's no extra object. Um, so we're, we only have um, conservation of angular momentum. There's nothing else in the system. Everything that we need to solve for is already in the system. All right. Uh, and we need an equation for conservation of angular momentum. And these conservation laws are incredibly difficult, right? Um, the initial angular momentum is equal to the final angular momentum. Okay. All right, so if we have all that, we can make an attempt at an answer. All right, so what's the first thing we want to do to find the answer? Well, we're looking for conservation of angular momentum, right? Uh, probably we want to look at um, what the initial angular momentum is first. Um, so that is Li equals, um, what do we have here? We have, um, a rotating, a rotating bar, right? So that's going to use I omega, and this is omega I, it's the initial one, because it's the initial, it's the initial, um, it's the initial angular momentum we're looking at. We use the initial angular speed. Uh, and then let's see, how about uh, the ball? The ball's not moving, so it doesn't have any angular momentum. Okay, so really we just have to find what I is. I, we can look that up for, um, for a bar with a pivot over here uh, at the end. Um, that's already in your book. And that's uh, one third ml squared. And um, then we multiply that by omega i. And that's a vector. And I am in this case going to not put a lot of numbers in till the end. Um, but I will say, I will take the direction out of this. So the direction of omega i is minus the, um, 
minus k, right? And, and so the vector omega i is the magnitude, 16 um, uh, inverse seconds, radians per second, times minus k, oh, the direction, all right? Um, so we have the magnitude, uh, well, minus one third L squared W I in the K hat direction. Okay. So that's decomposing that. Um, two, uh, we have our final angular momentum. Um, and then we have still the bar, but we also have um, this moving ball, right? So that's plus um, R cross P. Okay, so I'll have to figure out what each one of those things is. Um, R is just X and P is little m times V, right? And V, I'm saying, is going in the minus Y direction. So I'll throw all that in together. So I have minus one third, I oh, forgot my M, M L squared omega F, right? And that guy's in the K direction. Plus um, this three quarters L in the I hat direction cross um, cross P, which is M times V, right, which is little m times minus V in the J hat direction, right, it's minus J hat is, is the direction and V is the magnitude, okay? And so, um, our angular momentum is one-third ML squared Omega F. Yeah. I'm going to have good things happen, so let's just anticipate the good things, right? Um, uh, let's see. We've got I cross J, right? Um, so that's another minus. Three quarters little m big L v the mass of the ball the length of the rod and the speed and then we have i cross j which is k hat okay and that's a good thing because now we can just take the magnitudes and set them equal right because there's no difference in the direction we're lucky we only end up with one equation and one unknown right. So, three, uh, we set them equal to each other. And then we solve for V. Right? Um, this is exactly what we said we wanted to do. This is where we're going. This is where we are. Okay, so let's move this up. Give, my, give me a little bit more room to work. Um, okay, so we have um, from our uh, conservation law, Li is equal to Lf, so we can just say, well, what is Li? Well, it's minus m over 3 L squared omega i in the k hat direction. <clears throat> and that's also equal to minus m over 3 L squared omega F in the k-hat direction minus 3 quarters m L V in the k-hat direction. Okay, well, we have some nice things that happen, right? The um, k directions, they go away. And the, one factor of L goes away in each one of these, right? Um, so now what I can do is I can just say I've got this three-quarter MLV. Oh, also, actually, the minus signs. We can get rid of those. So let's 
let's then say we start with this three quarter ML or MV. Don't need the L anymore. Cross it out. Okay, and so we've got that, and it's equal to this ML over three times omega i, this initial part, minus the final part there. Okay. Um, so that seems pretty reasonable to me. Um, on top of that, we can just say, all right, well, let's divide by all this stuff, right? So we've got V is equal to 4 ninths, um, big M over little m, right? Um, times omega I minus omega F times L, all right? Um, let's see how much room, plenty of room, good, okay, so we have 4 ninths, uh, big M is 3 kilograms, I said, little m is 1 kilogram, um, omega I minus omega F is uh, 16 radians per second minus 4 radians per second, um, which is actually 12 radians per second and then the length is one meter, okay? All right, so here we've got a three that cancels out with one of the threes in this guy. This guy's got a three in it that cancels out and we have a four left over here. Um, so actually all we end up with is a four times four, which is 16 um, meters per second because the kilograms cancel. So that's our speed. Um, so let's see, does that seem reasonable to you? Uh, well, I mean, that's why we have the check step, right? See if that's reasonable. Um, first, the first thing we check is, okay, well, um, the units of velocity. Um, are meters per second, and the answer is in meters per second. You can almost always do this. Uh, in fact, you can always do this, um, and it's a really it's a really great check. You should be doing it all the time. That's why you keep your units whenever you st whenever you start plugging numbers into things. It is because if you do so, you can find errors right away. All right rather than waiting till the end and not having any idea why you have the wrong answer or even that you have a wrong answer. Having no way to tell because you didn't keep your units, okay? Um, now we can also say that this rod um, was moving really fast, right? Okay. Um, so why was it, oh, I don't know why it was moving very fast, but it was moving at um, 16 radians per second, um, which is, a, you know, a one full rotation every two and a third seconds or so. So it's moving really fast. Uh, and the, um, and it slowed down quite a bit. And uh, the final velocity, the final speed is, um, 16 meters per second, which is around and about, I'd say, 35 miles per hour, which is also fast, but possible. I mean, it's 35 miles an hour isn't, you know, crazy fast, but it is fast, uh, just like uh, rotating, rotating around um, twice, two or three times per second is pretty fast, but it's not really, really fast, all right? So that's um, more or less how you do these angular collisions. Um, you have to come over here, you have to identify your pivot, uh, you have to figure out, um, you know, if, if you have a um, stationary pivot like this, you don't, you have a place where um, energy and momentum can be, can leave the system, whereas the uh, angular momentum uh, is not affected by the pivot point because basically the, um, you know, there's no torque around the pivot point. Um, it's all looking pretty good. I'll see you in class.